hi everyone, it's Celeste, and today we are going to be working on this Wallolita set. It includes a kimono top, obi, and ruffled skirt. You can wear this multiple ways, and I will show you at the end of the video. So, let's get started. Literally, I, I guess let's get started now, huh? I will be using all of my Tsum Tsum material for this DIY. I made a Tsum Tsum dress earlier this year, but I have a lot of leftover, so I want to be putting that to use. And some trim, and some other stuff. So let's get going. I am going to be making 8 inch cuts onto my longest fabric, and that's because we are going to be using this in a ruffled skirt! What kind of Wallolita would we be making if there wasn't ruffled skirts? So begin cutting out multiple strips of 8 inches of fabric. Now I already had leftover material from the base of the other skirt. I used that for my OB. You can use 8 inches and fold it in half and then sew down the middle. That will create a 4 inch OB band and this will vary depending on how big you want your own OB. Now begin using lace and your trim and figure out the design that you want on your OB piece. I wanted lace underneath and then the beaded trim and that's what I decided to go with. And play with it, see what you have on hand. This is very fun to customize and change or keep it as simple as possible. I ultimately decided to use a different white lace that was a lot thinner than the other piece shown in my LA Fashion District haul. So I'm using this and I'm quilting it alongside the obi to make it more stiffer. And this was a really good idea because it's going to reinforce it and give it strength that it needs. Here you can see me zigzag stitching the beaded lace trim onto the middle of my lace piece for the obi. Now take out your remaining strips of fabric and hem them on both sides. After hemming both sides, sew all strips together. Now that this strip is now a double-edged hemmed piece, I'm folding it in half and cutting it. This is because I want 4 inches per ruffle and I didn't really want to cut multiple inches of 4. Knowing that I was going to have a very big cupcake skirt, I decided to keep going. So I hope you guys think that this isn't a crazy idea to cut 8 inches to get 4 inches and it's even versus cutting 4 uneven inches and it's just a nice little technique I did. Here I'm using a quick sew pattern of a circle skirt as the base of my skirt. Don't be afraid to use patterns that you have previously for different things. This one's actually like a leotard ice skater set. I cut the longest length because I wanted to be modest and I wanted to be very full. And then I'm pinning here and cutting out the top piece because I want it to fit my waist and you can do that with patterns. Cut it to your liking. I cut down one of the middle sides of the skirt and made it sure that it's even. Now I'm going to be attaching the ruffles to the bottom on the inside. So the right sides are not facing each other, the wrong sides are facing each other. And I'm going to slowly ruffle until my fingers bleed. I decided to do a box pleat ruffle. I like box pleat ruffles a lot more than just gathered ruffles. Especially since this isn't a spiral cut, this is just a rectangle cut. So begin doing this and then start layering ruffles on top of each other until you have finished the entire skirt. I placed the other ruffle line slightly above the other seam of where the other ruffles began. And I just keep going. So this is ruffle layer number three. Isn't that so amazing that I'm going to keep going until I reach the top? And that's when you add a waistband. Such tedious work. Here you can see an installed zipper and waistband. 
onto it and it looks amazing. I decided to use pink because I wanted this to be as girly as possible. Just kidding, I just like the idea of using a pink zipper with this very fun fabric. It reminds me of bubblegum. The zipper is aligned with the ruffles and it's fully functional and does not get in the way. Now we're going to start our top. Measure out your shoulder length and go from there. I should have added a few extra inches on mine. I measured a little bit short, so pay attention to my mistakes and make it longer than four inches because I didn't give myself seam allowance. Remember kids, add seam allowance. That's your smart part. So take two pieces of fabric, fold it over, and make sure you mark out your seam allowance and your shoulder size and begin to cut a diagonal fold for the kimono size. Like the wrapping part. Ta-da! There you now you have your two front pieces. Now measure out enough for your shoulder width and such and seam allowance. I forgot seam allowance here, so it was a little bit tighter on me unfortunately. So I should have added maybe 16 because it does have to go around your waist and your bust line. Now line up your shoulder pieces and your side pieces. So mine just looks like a box. Obviously you want your box to be a lot bigger and so that way if you have a bigger bust line you don't have a problem. Go off of which size is larger for you. Now go ahead and add a lot of space in between the sides for your sleeves. Here I'm doing about 8 inches. I honestly should have done about 10 inches. And then go on the other side and mark the same size. Make sure they're even. And then go ahead and pin the rest together and sew it. Now take out that same shirt material and measure out how long you want your sleeve to be and make a small cut. Now get all animals out of the way and then begin cutting the rest of the material. I said get all animals out of the way! Okay, now cut out the sleeve material. This is going to be the base of one sleeve and make sure that it's even. If your animal keeps interrupting you, like mine, make sure to put him in a safe area. Like that. Just move him out of the way. And then, oh, nope, nope. Nope, that wasn't moving out of the way correctly. Now go ahead and trim any excess and salvage edge that does not fit, so it is not uneven. Look, he just came back. Like, why, why doesn't he get it? He just loves to play. Here, make sure you fully satisfy your animals before continuing sewing so you won't get messed up. Anyways, grab the rest of your material and lay out, oh, look, he's back again. So grab the rest of your material and cut out a second sleeve from that base one. Once you're done with that, oh, here, let's grab them and put them to the side. So once you have your new material laid out, go ahead and cut out the second sleeve and then sew the bottom edge together and then sew it to the shirt and then hem it. So here you can see I'm cutting out the sleeve. No animal interruption. Hooray! Just kidding! Dog attack! <laughs> now to finish off the shirt, I'm going to be using this leftover waistband material that I made before. I'm going to be attaching it to the top edge of the shirt piece. So all around that and everything else. Here I haven't added the sleeves because I didn't want it to get in my way, but I'll be adding the sleeves last. Now go ahead and sew that down to the top edge on either side because this is double-sided. There's no wrong side, it's all right side. <laughs> and begin sewing. I decided to fold the seam upwards, almost like a French seam, and this is just to reinforce it. This step is totally optional, but I think it's going to help with the next step of my collar process. I wanted to use the beautiful design of the obi into the shirt. So what I'm going to be doing is using the white lace from the obi to the neckline. 
So what I'm going to do, since this is actually a really big collar piece, I'm going to fold it in half and add the lace trim on one side. So once I fold it over again, it's going to make a very thick and stiff collar piece. And so once I flip it over, it'll hide all the seams and it'll be extra enforced. Here I'm sewing the lace trim on the opposite side. So when I flip it over, it'll be facing the right side. I used a zigzag multi-stitch for all my lace because this will actually secure it down very nicely and I used white thread. Now that I had finished adding the lace and sec firmly secured it on both sides, I'm going to flip it in half on the other side, so right sides facing out, and then begin sewing it down again. This is firmly going to secure everything and give a really nice edge for the top. Now hem the bottom edge and the sleeves. Here is what it's going to look like. Here is outfit number one. It is just a nice tank top with the kimono top that we just made along with some black ants. So this is what it looks like completed and just being worn with the kimono top by itself. Now we're switching it up. Now I'm only wearing the skirt with the tank top. The same tank top because I think I love this tank top the most. So this is the Tsum Tsum Ruffle Skirt. It looks great on its own. And if it's a nice hot summer day, you don't have to wear all of it. It's really fun to twirl in and it does not expose your booty. Now here is the third way to wear everything. Wear the kimono top just as a cover, not as a real shirt, but as like a sweater scarf piece to your ensemble. So it still looks really cute, it's really loud, and it's forward mixing patterns. Don't be afraid and have fun with that. I forgot to mention that I closed my obi using hooks and eyes. So here you can see me using the hooks and eyes behind the bow. And the bow is really easy to make. If you need a tutorial on that, let me know. I can show you how to do that. This is what the final outfit looks like all together. This is full Wallowita loving goodness. Now I haven't made a bow or a headpiece because I didn't know what I wanted to do. So leave me a comment down below what kind of headpiece I should make for this outfit. I really love the versatility of these pieces. I love the kimono top, the skirt, and the obi. The obi is not so much that it has to be tied in with everything. I could still wear both pieces without it, but in the end, it does make it really cute and girly. And if I wanted to, I could even tuck in the kimono top for a different look. Please subscribe if you haven't subscribed already, and like this video if you really liked any of the looks. So subscribe for future videos on things that I will make, lookbooks, and DIY fashion. And you know, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you in one of my future videos.